fell asleep and my charger is upstairs and I really need to go charge my computer because I'm at 10% and I don't want to lose my train of thought while I'm in the writing zone. Oh my gosh, walking upstairs with a sleep foot is like actually really painful. Good morning, happy Tuesday. My name is Sarah, I'm a PhD student in English studying rhetoric and composition this is the first vlog of mine I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button if you're not new welcome back this is going to be a productive week in my life I know I say that a lot and it doesn't always end up being productive but this one is going to be productive we're gonna get some stuff done we started off strong this morning I set my alarm for seven o'clock didn't get out of bed till 7 45 but that's okay because I reached my goal I wanted to write for two hours and write 500 words and I did that I revisited an article in that process as well because writing is never just writing it's always reading and thinking and doodling and making crazy Venn diagrams and murder maps with the red strings everywhere but now I got dressed to go to physical therapy and I need to eat some breakfast before I go and I might chill out rest my mind for a little bit watch a vlog or something and then when I get back have a bunch of office hours with students well three and then I'm going to meet someone at a coffee shop to talk about potentially applying for a teaching award I knew you were gonna get in there <laughs> look at these chuggy spatulas Megan has oh this one says I'm all about that cake about that cake and you were a gift Oh, I forget that. <laughs> and this one says, hashtag yum. But honestly, these spatulas are really good. I was gonna say, but they were great. I feel like there's a third one in this set. I just gave Megan the shirt off my back. <laughs> Basically, she was making some lunch to bring with her to the writing set of her work and she goes, oh, I should have had you make me some eggs. And I said, do you want these? And she's like, I can't do that to you. And I was like, Megan, I would do it to you. So she said, I'll take your toast too. Because <laughs> Sarah, also it was funny, Sarah said, you need protein for your meeting with your advisor. <laughs> she does, does she not? It's a big one. Mm. Car wash again, even though I literally just went like four days ago. Because clearly karma came for me. from physical therapy and I'm feeling so sleepy I think I'm gonna make an iced coffee sometime iced coffee hurts my stomach in the afternoons but I'm gonna try it anyway because I'm really tired and I don't think matcha is gonna do the trick um and I have to meet with these students in office hours and I want to be awake to give them good feedback on their in progress assignments and as I mentioned I have a sort of coffee shop so I'm drinking coffee now and I'm meeting at a coffee shop. I'll get tea or something. A coffee shop meeting with someone to chat about a teaching award. She won it last year and I know it's like a really competitive award and it's like the application is like an 80 page document, like not exaggerating and it's like a really rigorous process. So it's not due till October, um, but I just wanna like chat with her about it now in June just to see if it's something that she thinks I'm even qualified for and it's like worth my time, um, worth my energy. So yeah, I am excited to see what she has to say about that. But needless to say, I'm gonna need some coffee if I'm gonna be like mentally on for these types of things. So I'm just gonna make a little iced coffee with my Nespresso and then I think I'm gonna get ready a little bit. Might put some makeup on, I feel kind of bleh. And then I will probably look over some of the stuff for the scholarship so I can write down some questions to ask her and then meet with my students. Okay, I finished office hours and I am realizing, I know I've talked about this before, but this assignment is a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be for students. I'm also warming up some leftover pesto tortellini for lunch. We need to leave here in like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I, for those of you who are new, 
you gotta watch some of my other videos to fully understand what I'm teaching about. But basically, it's a class about vlogs, and the final project is for students to make a vlog of their own. The trajectory of the course was like analysis of a vlog in written form, a remix video of vlogs to get like the hang of editing skills, and then actually filming and editing their own whatever public story they want to tell, which will take the form of a vlog. Thinking really expansively about what we, how we define vlog. And I'm just in hindsight, I would have had them make a vlog first, then make this remix video second or third, because they just don't, I don't know if it's that they don't have familiarity with the content, if they're overwhelmed with the editing, if it's just a summer class and it's like moving super quickly but for whatever reason making this remix video feels really really hard for a lot of students and i've pushed back the deadline once initially like from the syllabus when i was like planning the unit because i was like yeah we're gonna need more time and then i found out that basically all the students were having the same glitch with adobe premiere rush when they went to add text it just wasn't working so i was on the phone with tech support yesterday and I was able to find some like workaround, which is really annoying because you have to download the motion graphic template and then look like, manually insert it. The Adobe like server just uh, isn't picking up on that motion graphic template whenever you go to add text. Anyway, I figured out a workaround, but because they haven't been able to add text, that's like really hindered a lot of like their video editing processes and just like what they've been producing. So I gave them another extension till Friday but only for the homework. But like in class starting tomorrow, we're gonna start like the content for the next unit. But I don't know, you can just feel like the anxiety when meeting with students, like they feel stressed out. And their stress is making me feel stressed. Um, but it's a 200 level class, it's an intensive writing class, so it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be a lot of work. Um, it's just always hard to know, like as a teacher on this end of things, how hard is too hard, how fast is too fast, um, so yeah, that's the boat I'm in. Uh, I feel like teaching this class has taken up a whole lot of my time, but it's part of the disc, so at least I feel like I'm making progress towards the disc. Okay, off to go meet at the coffee shop to talk about the award. And here's the fit, wearing these long Abercrombie linen sort of pants. They're like a linen cotton blend. I got for only $70 at TJ Maxx. Shout out my last vlog when I was truly like shook. Okay, it is eight o'clock now. I am back instantly showered because it, we sat outside and I was like so sweaty and sticky. It felt really nice, but like I was really sweaty at the same time. And I was like, okay, what should we eat for dinner? And Megan was like, let's not do like either of the meals we have planned. Cause they were like more like labor intensive. So she was like, what if I just like make quesadillas with some leftover veggies that we have? and she made me an incredible quesadilla. I'll show you hers because I ate mine already. There's just like black beans, pepper, onion, corn, I don't know, but it is so good. And then when you add this Taco Bell mild sauce, my hyperfixation from a couple months ago, delicious. The queen herself. It's me. Hi vlog. Sarah girl boss today, I don't know if she told me. <laughs> Tell them thank you for your birthday wishes in the last vlog. <gasps> oh yeah, you're so right. I need to get back in the comments. Um, but thank you all. You all said very kind things. I'm very grateful. You guys are the best. It was Megan's birthday in my last vlog and I told people to comment their favorite thing about her. And people have such nice comments. Um, yeah. Thank you, vlog. She said thank you. Time to watch Below Deck. I'm like really tired. I feel like part of it is because I was sitting outside in the sun. Um, so I'm gonna watch this episode. I'm gonna have myself a good sleep tonight, even though I had three caffeinated drinks today, because I got a green tea when we were at the coffee shop. But I'm immune to caffeine at this point. 9.16, not even fully dark out, and I'm gonna get in bed for the night. Good morning, happy Wednesday. So I put my hair in the overnight sort of heatless curls um little contraption with like the little you know silky long headband where you ponytail the end and wrap it around i don't use it as much as i should because when i first get my hair cut each of the layers are a little too short especially like the bang front pieces and they fall out but it's very easy it's good for zoom and it i think protects my hair from having to blow dry it as often and then when I woke up this morning, I just took it out while it was like falling out because I did it pretty loose and then just sprayed some hairspray. 
anyway, it is, what time is it? 9.05, I teach at 9.10. And I feel a little nervous about how this class is gonna go because students are still working on their major assignment from unit two because of the technical issues that I talked about, but we're starting the content for unit three today. So I feel like students are gonna be a little dead inside and a little like, I don't wanna do this, I just wanna like work on my project. And I thought about canceling class, but I've already like pushed back this deadline and I think we just need to move forward because it's an eight week class and that's how it goes. Um, but I think it will be enjoyable. It's watching a lot of vlogs today and talking about why they are effective and what they tell us about their creator, like the content creator of the vlogs, and basically how identity and embodiment are impacting the way people create vlogs. And every day I do an attendance question in the chat and today's question is gonna be, what is your aesthetic? And I hope that gets students to start thinking about like what story they wanna tell and how they want to tell it in the vlogs that they create. Finished teaching and it is so rainy and gloomy and my back is really, really hurting. So I am laying in bed with a heat pad on and I'm gonna read some Harry Potter. Just try and like chill out for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. And then I will hop into some dissertation work. Okay, ignore the noisy washing machine in the background. Megan is doing laundry, but I just brainstormed a bunch of stuff for that scholarship, not scholarship, award, teaching award that I talked about yesterday. She gave me a lot of really great advice. It also made me realize this is gonna take a lot of time and it's also like insanely competitive and I need to think that like my goal wouldn't necessarily be to like get it. I mean, that would be an awesome goal, but also like it would just be really good practice putting all these materials together for when I do go on the job market. And just like gathering these letters of rec and stuff like that, it's never like a bad thing to do because I will have them in my dossier for when I go on the market. So as of now, I think I'm gonna try and get some stuff together. So I was brainstorming, um, also responded to a bunch of emails from students. Students are still having tech issues and I'm trying really hard to not be frustrated. Um, not with them, obviously, just like with Adobe because like why is this stuff happening now when it has literally never happened and I've taught Adobe like two or three semesters aside from this. So anyway, I am going to eat some egg bites that I came out Starbucks today and they gave her these free egg bites. I guess like the person before her like didn't want them or I don't know. Somehow she got them. So I'm going to warm these up, eat these, and then meet with a student in office hours and then work on some dissertation stuff. I'm struggling with motivation right now. Bad. I just don't want to do the dish. But I know the sooner that I get it over with, the better I will feel. And procrastinating is not the answer. So maybe if I go to a coffee shop, it'll motivate me to like try and write something. So I think that's what I'll do even though I really don't need to be spending money on a coffee shop, but let's do it. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, where do you think I should go to do some work? Because I have no motivation. I have to go somewhere. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm either going to go to like a coffee shop, probably Verona because I vibed there, but I'm not going to get coffee because I already had two cups today. So what are you going to get? I would get, would get? They have like teas or like I, a, I need to know all the details. A, okay. a sparkling water or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or should I go get a smoothie bowl? The options for smoothie bowls for a place that I could sit and study are like pretty much feta. Soldiers is like way too loud and bumping. Um, they're two good options in my opinion. I think I want like the vibes of Verona, but I'm like, but all I've had is egg bites today. Okay. I'll go to Feta and try and get some work done, and if I can't, maybe I'll just go to Verona after. Yeah. Also, her shirt says Dr. Pepper is a woman. That's incredible. Thank you. I don't know. That's a tough one. I also don't want to lead you astray. I think both are great options. Okay. I mean, we've worked at Feta before, and it, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it is about 3.45 now. I just got back home. I spent about an hour and a half at Feta. The smoothie bowl was delicious. 
and the vibes were really good. My brain was just like working in overdrive and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to pack it up and take a break. Um, that's one thing that I feel like people who like aren't in academia don't really understand when I'm like, no, I sat and I thought for like two hours and people are like, okay, normal people work eight to five. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know how you guys do that. If my, if I was like working this way for, from an eight to five job, I would like explode. Anyway, two hours feels like a lot. Um, when you're just like intense, intense thinking like that. And it is a lot. So I was packing stuff up and I was like, okay, I think it'd be good just to like get some movement and go for a walk. And when I like stood up, my back was hurting so bad. So I don't think I'm going to be going for a walk. But the weather's pretty nice out, um, so I might lay in my hammock and just vibe for a little bit. And I do want to do some more writing. I have like some specific prompts I want to think through um, before the day ends. Ended up not doing another little work sesh because I feel like I'm at a good stopping point now. And I feel like if I do more work, I'll feel like I just wasted my time because I don't think I have enough like <laughs> energy because my back was really hurting. Um, and I feel like if I do work tonight that I won't want to do any in the morning and I feel like I do good work in the morning So I'm just gonna wake up early get some things done tomorrow morning And we'll just call it quits for the day. I did some more stuff for that award application sent a bunch of emails For it really like brainstorm put a bunch of stuff together and I taught today and It's okay. Not everything not every day can be like a hundred percent my best work um so yeah, I'm gonna get started making some dinner tonight. We're making fancy pizza, which is a recipe from a half-baked harvest book, which is like a super yummy like salad on top of this like pizza that has a bunch of different cheese and like this buttermilk ranch sauce, and it's very good. One of the best comments in the last vlog about Megan was a scholar and a chef. So sweet. Look at her chefing it up. Yeah. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the recipe book, but it's not super practical to eat it with a salad on top. So I just sort of put it on the side. This super crispy, cheesy pizza. It's like a vinaigrette that goes on it. It's just, it's really good. You have to trust me on it. Guess where we are? Culver's. Happy Thursday. I wanted to be a very early worker today, but here I am, almost 10 o'clock, just getting started. But that's okay, because I don't really have anything scheduled for today, just a couple office hours visits, so I can spend a lot of time doing two things. One, working on the disc, and two, lesson planning. And Megan's sister's are actually coming into town today, so I gotta do a little bit of cleaning, just with like my bathroom, and I wanna vacuum and like help her clean up the office, because this is also like the guest bedroom as well. Um, so yeah, let's hop into some disc stuff. I, as I mentioned yesterday, left myself some like questions that I know I need to write about. And these are like questions that I've really been like putting off for a while because I just don't really know how to answer them but I'm hoping that by doing some writing, I like think of something. I've done like a lot of reading and a lot of just like marinating in the back of my mind how to answer these questions. And hopefully I can come up with something good enough today. These are things that I knew I didn't answer enough in like the first draft of like my, the half of my first chapter that I sent to my advisor. And I like put in parentheses and highlighted it and was like, I need to unpack this more. And he left comments throughout the draft. And when we had our meeting on Zoom about it, he was like, 
yeah, you don't really answer that question. And I was like, I know, because I don't know how. And I should like start recording my meetings with him because every time he's like, well, why don't you just say this is this is this? And he makes it sound so simple and I'm just like, you make me feel like an idiot. Um, but I know it's because like, I'm like so in it. It's hard to like see the forest for the trees at this point. But basically I'm working on what I feel like I'm always working on, which is connecting my different areas together connecting vlogging to personal writing specifically and also making a case for why it's important that we even use this framework of personal writing to understand vlogging i feel like i turn to it because people aren't talking about vlogging in rec comp but people are talking about personal writing in rec comp especially more recently so by saying hey vlogging is a form of personal writing here's how it fits into composition studies because I feel like the question that I always get when I'm like meeting with my committee and stuff like this and the question that like reverberated throughout my prospectus defense was why is vlogging valuable? And I like know in my body, in my heart why it's valuable, but sometimes articulating that within the framework of composition studies or rhetoric and composition can be a little bit difficult. So here's to trying to write that today or at least make some headway towards writing that. And I have three, four key articles, well, three key articles and one book that I want to use to help me explain this. So let's do it. Okay, so I'm trying to incorporate smarter writing practices into my writing practice. And I wanna work smarter, not harder. And I've talked to my advisor about ChatGPT and he's like, yeah, use ChatGPT. So I've been dabbling a little bit. So I am going to log on right now and as I mentioned, what I'm doing is talking about how a vlogging connects to personal writing. And I have a lot of different definitions of personal writing from like the four texts that I'm working with primarily in this section. But I want to know just like the general, I don't know, like when I say personal writing to like the average person, whatever that means, what does that mean? So I am going to ask ChatGPT, what is personal writing? And see what they say. It's loading. Personal writing refers to any form of written expression that reflects the thoughts, feelings, experiences, and perspectives of an individual. It's a form of self-expression where the writer shares their personal thoughts, beliefs, opinions, and insights on various topics. It can take the form and then it gives me some genres. Diaries, journals, memoirs, personal essays, letters, and blog posts. Okay, this is what I thought. Uh, the purpose of personal writing can vary depending on the writer's intent. Some people use personal writing as a means of self-reflection, self-discovery, and personal growth. It allows them to explore their thoughts and emotions, gain clarity on their experiences, and make sense of their lives. Oh, interesting. Personal writing can also be used to communicate and connect with others. By sharing personal stories, perspectives, and insights, writers can create a sense of empathy, understanding, and relatability with their readers. It can foster a sense of community. One of the key characteristics of personal writing is authenticity. This is like very, very interesting to me. Um, especially because sometimes when I like see trends or themes, <laughs> look up around me. <laughs> That's too much. But I notice trends or themes, I it's hard for me to tell if like how subjective it is. And I mean like writing is always subjective, interpretation is always subjective, obviously. But I'm like, okay. ChatGPT is pulling from a bunch of different sources and summarizing them. So these are like prevalent themes, especially the idea of authenticity. That's something I talk a lot about um, in vlogging and teaching the class about vlogging. So now I'm going to narrow it down a little bit and say, what is personal writing within the discipline of composition studies? The discipline of composition studies, personal writing refers to the act of using personal experiences, anecdotes, and reflections as a basis for writing and learning. It is often used as a pedagogical approach, interesting, in writing instruction to engage students, encourage self-expression, and facilitate critical thinking and inquiry. Personal writing and composition studies can take different forms and serve various purposes. Here are a few examples. 
this is very interesting. Personal narrative, reflective writing, autoethnography, personal argument. Now I'm gonna ask if they can cite some sources for me. Can you cite some academic sources that define personal writing within composition studies? I don't know if it's gonna do this actually. I think so. Yeah, no. I apologize that as an AI language model, I don't have direct access. And then they tell me to go to like JSTOR or MLA. Uh, okay, that's what I thought. I'm not really sure what I want to do with this information right now. Let me, let me see if it helps me make some connections to vlogging. Just as a way to like prompt my thinking. Is vlogging a form of personal writing? Whenever it like is blinking for a while and it has to think, I feel like I stumped it and then I feel like I'm winning. Uh, yes, vlogging can be considered a form of personal writing. While traditional writing typically involves putting pen to paper or typing on a keyboard, vlogging involves using video as the medium for self-expression and storytelling. Vloggers create videos to document and share their personal experience, thoughts, opinions, and perspectives. This is great. Similar to personal writing in written form, vlogging allows individuals to communicate their ideas, showcase their unique voices and personalities, and connect with an audience. Vloggers often share personal stories, provide insights to their lives, discuss various topics, or offer advice. They may document their travels, share their hobbies and interests. Okay. This is like useful background information, and I could see myself using like a sentence or two of this to say like, when people think about vlogging as personal writing, here's what they think, but then the connections that I want to make and like the interventions are like, here is how it connects to um, rhetorical awareness, here's how it connects to embodied writing, here's how it connects to feminism and feminine writing. And that's something I don't think ChatGPT could do because it, I don't think ChatGPT, or I know it, like AI systems can't do like innovative thinking. It just like pulls and summarizes things that it finds online. That's something that's interesting. In ChatGPT's discussion of personal writing, it really highlights this role of connecting with the audience through authentic content. Um, and so obviously coming from like a rhetorical framework, I, I think a lot about audience and audience awareness and courting your audience as an article I read referred to it. So that's interesting to see that ChatGPT is taking this rhetorical framework and I don't know if it's because they asked to define it within composition studies or what, but it's very interesting to see how it's even talking about audience. Because I feel like when we think of personal writing, we think of it in like these expressivist terms of like, I'm doing it for me, I'm just expressing myself, and that's a big part of it, but in the way that I want students to think about blogging, and in the class that I'm teaching about blogging, so much of it is thinking about your audience, and thinking about the different bodies and embodiments of your audience, um, to be as inclusive as possible, to be as specific as possible, and so that's really interesting that just this general definition on ChatGPT is pulling an audience. So again, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this, um, and that's where I get a little stumped on ChatGPT. I could obviously copy and paste parts of it, um, I I don't feel like I'm cheating. I have talked about this with my advisor and he's like, yeah, use ChatGPT. Um, but I don't know if it's useful for me. Like this isn't really telling me anything innovative that I would need in the dissertation. So definitely something I'm playing around with. More on this later. I would love to do a sit down video about ChatGPT. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. Okay, so finding some drawbacks to ChatGPT. I asked it to provide me with a definition of personal writing within composition studies and it provided me with a great definition um, and it even gave me a reference and everything that was cited and it was from education though and I looked it up and I couldn't find the source but that could be because like I I like I'm not familiar with education journals so then I replied and said that's from education can you provide me with a source from composition studies and they said apologies from confusion earlier Here's a study definition of personal writing within composition studies. And they said, according to Dr. Kathleen Blake Yancey, which is like, she's a big name in comp studies. I was like, okay, slay. A prominent scholar in composition studies, personal writing can be defined as blank. And they give a beautiful definition of personal writing and they cite the article, which is made not only in words, composition in a new key. And this was like a keynote address that has been like published uh, from 2004. But I've read that piece several times because it's about multimodal composition. And I'm like, huh, I really don't remember her talking about personal writing in that. So then I pull up the article because I have it in print copy, but I wanted to be able to search it. Um, and I find it on JSTOR and I just did command F personal writing and she literally never talks about personal writing in the article. So this is what people mean when they say that ChatGPT has its limits and sometimes spews false information. So 
yeah, I wouldn't just go copying pasting some quotes without doing some double checking. I think it's great for idea generation and seeing just like what's out there and for it providing you with like works to look at because all of the works that it's given me presumably are real works but I wouldn't trust that the quotes it's pulling are like legitimate quotes from them because here were two instances in which they weren't. Um, but it's been really interesting just to see like what themes it pulls. Like I mentioned earlier, it's talked a lot about authenticity. It's talked a lot about self-reflection. It's even made connections to um, personal writing as a way to like analyze oneself and to analyze like larger cultural patterns, which is something that I think about. So good for idea generation. Um, but don't go copy and pasting and adding it into the discs without doing your double checking. Okay, it is a little before 1.30. I am proud of the work that I got done. I tried to do like a double stint of work today because I don't think I'm going to do any tomorrow or this weekend just because Megan's sisters are coming and that's okay. I got quite a bit of new words written and I did a lot of reorganizing of other sections. Um, it's not the best writing, but it's good enough for first draft writing. I'm almost done with this section and then I can finally like reorganize the chapter as a whole and then see what still needs to be written. So uh, there still needs to be a lot of writing. Like don't feel like I'm about to be done with the chapter. Um, that's like for Megan specifically when she watches this. Because I just said yesterday I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this by July 1st and I still feel uneasy about that. Anyway. Um, still feels like there's a lot of moving parts and I don't know how they all connect exactly, but I don't think I will by the end of this chapter. I don't think I will until like I get more into the weeds of things, analyzing the data from the class that I'm teaching with the IRB and stuff like that. Um, so good enough for now. And I have an office hours meeting with a student in about an hour. Um, so I think I'm going to decompress a little bit. My mind feels like it was working hard today. Um, I might make a matcha might start editing this vlog who knows and then i'll meet with a student and then i will get into lesson planning for tomorrow's class finished meeting with the student in office hours and i really need to get out of the house so i'm gonna take myself on a little drive to go to starbucks because i saw on the app that matcha is back and i really want a matcha latte with peach juice it's gonna be so good i'm gonna clean my bathroom and then to the dreaded lesson planning. 6.15, I feel like I just finished doing school stuff for the day. I have no idea how lesson planning takes as long as it does. And I also clean my bathroom. So I'm gonna take a shower, wash my hair, it feels so gross. I also feel like I was getting a headache from having it like up pretty tight and back the whole day. Um, a nice cold shower to prevent this overheating that I feel coming on. Okay, it is about 10.30. I'm gonna get in bed for the night. First, I'm gonna read some Harry Potter. So if you guys made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, you should go ahead and do that and follow me on social media while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Let me know if talking more about ChatGPT is something you'd want to see or let me know what other requests for videos you guys have. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.